Welcome to Collier's TV. Today we have with us uh, Mr. Ajit Chordia, Managing Director of Olympia Group here in Chennai. Sir, it's really a privilege to sit with you. Um, you are seen as one of the pioneers of real estate, especially commercial real estate, to open up a market like Gindi here in Chennai. I'll come to that. But before that, I'd like to ask you, what did you see in the real estate industry that attracted you into this industry? Why did you get into this industry? And uh, you know, what do you see as the future of the industry now that you're in it? My family has been in real estate for the last 40 years. Uh, and uh, my grandfather has been developing commercial real estate uh, right from 1960s. So I would say that almost for the last 50 years, my family is there in real estate. Number of uh, commercial buildings have been built by him. It is only after uh, his demise, uh, there was more focus on the auto retailing. We are mm. dealers for Maruti, for yes. Bajaj and for Honda. So I um, started, I entered into the auto retailing business and I was in this business for, the, for almost, uh, um, almost uh, 15 years. My brother also joined my work. It so happened that there was a consultant who had come and we had commissioned him to do role clarification and position clarification. Okay. So in that he came and he had mapped the, uh, the, the, what is the activities which are being done of all the top managers, including we are the promoters. So the finding was he found me to be redundant. Okay. <laughs> so he said that between you and your brother, both of you are doing, doing the same, the same job. thing. So he said, uh, he asked me independently that yeah. in, if your brother is not there, what would happen to your business? Yeah. I said, nothing, I will look after. Yeah. The same question was put to him also. Okay. I was not there. He also said the same thing. If your brother is not there, what happens? He said, absolutely no problem. I will do it. So okay. they came to the conclusion why two of you are here doing the same work. And he took us uh, more intensely that you people are entrepreneurs. Yeah. You people are risk takers. Uh, you should look at uh, new business opportunities. And he said, one of you will have to move out. You can't be here at the same place. So I being the elder one, I said that, okay, I would like to uh, venture out. Again, the, we mapped list of items which we would do. I said, industry, manufacturing, my family would be averse to that. Yeah. Trading, another thing, I don't think it makes sense for me. So then what are the core competencies which are there in the family? We said, real estate is one of them. And I chose real estate. And that is how I'm here today. That is really interesting. I should ask you, do you, do you pay that consultant royalty? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 we didn't pay for it. I mean, it right. was worth it. it was worth, he's my HR mentor. So I even, if right. I have any issues today, even today, I get through to him. That's amazing. So, you know, that that is uh, one of the most unique stories I've heard of how someone's got into real estate. <laughs> and, and it seems like, you know, you follow a very systematic approach uh, to decide what to get into. And I'm sure I'll see a little bit more about that. In, in even deciding how you're going to get out and of a venture and get into a venture. That's very interesting. Now that you're in the industry, um, the industry has changed quite a lot, even in the last 15 years. Um, from what you've seen as you entered to where it is right now, um, you know, there, there is a lot of perceptions about this industry. Um, it's plagued by delays. It's plagued by uh, a perception that the, the developers are in it just to make money. So the very, um, very, very simple question, is this justified? And what are ways developers and the industry can, you know, recover from this perception? See, the, uh, definitely the, the issue is serious. So uh, at least my journey uh, in a focused way into the real estate business has been in the last 15 years. And uh, I, I will not blame the customers. I will not blame the customer. One learning which has come to me, uh, and I'm sure most of the other developers who have been for long, is very clear that the prices just can't go up. Hmm. Hmm. So the law of gravity will have to pull it down. So there has got to be corrections. So that is one particular part. So we need to be very clear. And uh, the delays which are there are not justified. It is again discipline. Hmm. And uh, uh, people, some of them have learned it the hard way and some I'm sure current situation, whoever is, who has been in the business for the last five, six years at least, yeah. he would know Karke, that uh, there is a limitation to which you could grow. Mm. And the mm. market, you just can't keep on expanding the market. Mm. So there is going to be ups and downs. So you need to know what is the amount of funds available with you, to what extent you can leverage, 
and then deliverables will have to be honored. So discipline, know your, know your capability um, and ensure that you're honoring what you're promising. Okay, those, those seem to be the trademarks that you are, uh, um, you are following. So I'll come to the customer. You, you mentioned we cannot blame the customer. He's not creating a perception that is not there. How does Olympia as a group deliver to the customer and manage to keep a brand like this, uh, even in times like this? Uh, how do you ensure that that, uh, that brand is preserved? See, it's, uh, what happened was we started with our first project, Olympia Technology Park. We had conceptualized the project to be done in three phases. But we came little before time, and by the time we started, we had we had pre-leased almost 70% of the building. So what was uh, what was factored or what was planned to be done over a period of three phases, we had done the entire thing in one phase, okay. and uh, everything was favorable then. The market was favorable. The banks were um, uh, ready to fund. The interest rates were low. The laborers were available. Steel and cement was also uh, reasonably priced volume discounts were available. So I think everything set in place and we were able to deliver within a period of 12 months the first tenant moved in. Mm. That's an almost a million and uh, uh, 1.3 million square feet of office building. So we had the first tenant moving in. A lot of learning experience that is one particular. So it became that the expectations from the customer that if it is Olympia then you would be delivering on time. Mm. Then mm. having securitized our money which we had invested in Olympia Tech Park uh, after the leasing, we moved into residential development. In residential development also we thought it will be the same play and we uh, started a million square, a million and a half square feet and uh, we got contractor from outside the city and uh, he started the work and then the whole set of problems came in. So the project was delayed, the contractor, uh, the market turned a little bit bad and the contractor was not available. I had to hire rescue contractors, material prices went up. Everything which can go wrong, I can write a treatise on that. <laughs> Happened there. So I, I went through a, where I could have earned hundreds of crores of profit. I ended up with making very, very small profit. Okay. And even that profit, will it, be, will it remain with me or not is a big question. So it is a great learning experience. So then I told customers that the market is like this and this like that. He said, fine. Uh, but from Olympia, I expected all this and more. Hmm. I, hmm. I, I expected that my, my product would be delivered on time. Hmm. It has to be delivered with a reasonable quality. Hmm. So we knew our, our competency is not there. I don't have the in-house capability. Building one particular building was good. And hmm. having multiple buildings and a residential building is different from office. Hmm. Next project, we, we, we had signed up uh, uh, land. We had purchased the particular land. So we decided if I do it in-house, it will be chaos. We called LNT and then gave it to them, and okay. it was a turnkey. So it was in design and build. Only architectural design was mine, structural, MEP, everything was mine. I know we are paying a premium, yeah. but my, my my understanding of the market was whatever premium I'm paying, 50% of the premium I'll be able to command from the customer mm, mm, mm. as a price, mm. and balance 50% premium which I am giving, mm. I would be able to recover by supposedly timely delivery mm, and mm. I was right. Mm. So the project did come up uh, within time. I was able to regain the uh, customer's confidence. Uh, the customer complaints are hardly anything in mm. that particular project. Mm. The next project again we said I still don't have the capability to do in-house. Huh. When I expanded my OMR project again we gave it to LNT. He said that uh, I, will, I will make less money or I will not make enough money but still at least I will not have the embarrassment of uh, facing the customer and the customer complaints and leaking bathrooms and uh, uh, mismatch in tile and you know yeah. most of other complaints yeah. which are there. Yeah. So I think we, were, we have done reasonably well. Now in the last six years, seven years having gained experience, mm. uh, we have now started doing independent buildings which are there, standalone buildings which mm. are there. We are doing it in, not in-house. I've been in employing contractors. Hmm. We don't have any project management is done in house. Nice. So we have okay. we have done reasonably well there. So clearly, um, you've learned from the experience, uh, and in this whole um, 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 experience that you've narrated, one thing that I I get is that you actually not minded paying for uh, learning from the experience and paying to ensure that your brand is preserved. 
Um, you know, that seemed to be the most important thing. I heard you say at least twice, uh, you know, even if I didn't make as much money, I, I, it was important not to hear the cus customer complaints and learn through the experience. So uh, that's probably some of the lessons someone can take if, when they are viewing this. The, the question I also want to ask is just before this, you mentioned you started commercial here in Gindi. You were one of the first ones to do that. Um, now that is being very brave, mm -hmm. you know, um, to 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 make a destination in commercial. Very few people have successfully done it, and the the success that you've had is legendary in terms of the portfolio you have here in Chennai and that too in Gindi. Um, how, how did you conceptualize it? How did you how did you see that the market is going to move towards this uh, micro market? I would. I would give <laughs> credit to the destiny. I, I don't think <laughs> I, uh, I would have conceptualized because it, it has an, a beautiful story behind the whole particular thing. Uh, mm -hmm. This Gindi, this particular property was a battery manufacturing unit uh, of Everady Industries. So they used to make those uh, torchlight batteries yeah. which were there. And uh, it was a compliant company. So okay. uh, it, it, it had a very good uh, environment, health and safety records. Yep. And uh, it was Union Carbide, yes, so from there yes. the Khaitans had taken over. This was a, st the, the company was deeply stressed okay. uh, with the acquisition. So I had my automobile workshop in the neighborhood and uh. we were paying rentals there and we said that whatever bottom line we have is getting vanished in the rentals. Company can, has reserves, we can buy the property. Uh, we would rather buy a property than monthly pay rent. So we were looking for and then we got an opportunity to buy 1.1 acre out of this property was identified as a surplus land. Okay. okay. Uh, McKinsey's had given a report to them that you need to reduce your debt, 100 crores of surplus was identified by them, you sell off these assets, you will generate 100, 25% of your debt will come down. Hmm. Hmm. So this particular thing, again because of my Calcutta connections and the promoters of Everady being from Calcutta, yeah. so we got this particular lead, I went, I negotiated, I purchased for my automobile workshop. Okay. Then we gave an automobile workshop we were trying to build. Then we said, Karke, we had uh, a logistic company coming. They said, we will take it on rent. So we said, we will go with a logistic company. Then again, we said, uh, we were negotiating with the logistic company. Then we said, Karke, if someone came that you can do an IT building here. Okay. In the neighborhood, one or two <laughs> IT <consulted>. buildings. Had <laughs> so we went and put up a plan for an IT building. Yeah. So an IT building plan was also ready, yeah. a photo. And we didn't have our registration with uh, the property was not, uh, uh, you know, registered by everybody because of some technical problems. Okay. So we were in touch with them. Every yeah. three months yeah. I used to meet them. Yeah. I used to keep him posted, my car workshop, then that uh, logistic company coming up and part logistic company, part car workshop. Yeah. And then we said put up an IT <laughs> building. So that fellow said, it, yeah, something is seriously wrong with Kaitans because uh, he said, this fellow came two years back to buy this for a workshop and today he is talking of some swanky building. I don't think we need to make batteries here. <laughs> so before that, they were they have two factories here. They were looking at shifting uh, uh, the Tirvatyur factory to Chennai and yeah. they wanted to sell the Tirvatyur. Mm -hmm. We negotiated that land also okay. to okay. buy. Okay. And the shifting had started, they negotiated. But when they saw this plan of ours, they said, boss, wait. <laughs> they did a reverse. We said, now Gindi will be shifted to with you okay. and the entire Gindi property is on sale. Okay. I purchased one acre for two crores. Yeah. For balance seven acres, I paid 100 crores. <laughs> Matter of two hours, two years. <laughs> That's the highest appreciation they would have probably yeah. seen, right? Two crores <laughs> is what I paid for, uh, uh, I mean, about two and a half crores or something I paid yeah. for uh, one acre of yeah. land yeah. for yeah. the balance. And he offered me the entire property for 16 crores. At that said, time? At that time. Uh -huh. Take it for 16. I said, what will I do for 16 crores? Yeah. I, I need only one acre. I don't yeah. need these sheds which were yeah. there. It was a lovely property. But even I was not able to see beyond. So it was only step by step is what it was. So for one acre, they got about two and a half crores. For the balance seven acres, in two years time, I gave them 100 crores. <laughs> That's an amazing story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and and, uh, and in a way, they, they conceptualized the potential of this property through you, yes. right? Yes. Uh, so that's uh, that's really interesting. So that's how Kindi came as uh, 
a destination. After that, that has been Karke. So there are one or two buildings, and after Olympia Tech Park, I think almost all companies, all manufacturing companies which have closed are trying to convert themselves into IT or the trying to relocate and then convert into IT. Today, uh, thanks to this building, you have almost uh, more than 4 million, 5 million square feet of That's IT right. space in Gindi state itself. That's right. It is becoming the main destination. And, Today, there is zero vacancy in yeah. Gindi. Also, from, the, from, a, from a distance to airport, distance to city, it's kind of well placed. So now, CBD itself has been moving. Yeah, CBD yeah. itself today the is moving towards Gindi. So yeah. it's now very near Gindi, and I would say that I wouldn't be surprised today if we have to call Katyapara Junction as, as the well CBD. 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 You have metro, you have hotels, you have yeah. rail connectivity, train connectivity, airport, everything uh, uh, just in the immediate neighborhood. So you can say that you played a big part in moving the CBD of yes. Chennai. Uh, that, that, that is an amazing le legacy to leave behind in the city. So more about that. What do you see as your legacy and what's the vision forward for your company? Where would you like to see Olympia down the line? Um, you know, you have achieved success. Uh, what more? What And what drives you to achieve that? See, the whole thing is there are two things which we have uh, been able to capture uh, in our journey. So it is, it is n again not by design, it is probably the market which had forced us. So a any project which we do has got to be of some reasonable size and it has got to be a landmark, number one. Number two, or rather number, th this is number two, and then number one is uh, each of the buildings will have to be sustainable building. The sustainable building is something which got attached to us thanks to Olympia Technology Park. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So almost all our projects would be uh, green rated and I am an engineer. So I keep looking for a differentiator. Hmm. So what is it that I can add in terms of technology which need not necessarily cost more. Hmm. At the same time my product is going to be different from that of other buildings. Hmm. Hmm. So one of the key reasons for the success of Olympia Technology Park was it was the uh, it was th perhaps the first large green rated building yes and we have that over there yes, yes. <laughs> so when again this is a great story i think yeah. it's, it's my uh, my classmate was my air conditioning consultant and so when he came here he d he was discussing with me he said ajit you should go for a green building and i can assure you you will get 50% extra rentals i said wait what is this i myself was looking for a different shade yeah. i said chennai had RMZs and a um, couple of other Bangalore based developers. Yes. So they were only the suppliers of office and Chennai based developers there were only one Arihant and Prince. There were That's only right. two people who were coming in an organized way. No one else was coming Looking with at uh, commercial. commercial. Yes. Even today no one else yeah. uh, looks at yes. commercial. So that's a very sad thing. So I was trying to look in what way could my product be different. Hmm. And when this friend of mine said that Ajit look at green, I said tell me what more about green. Because hmm. even as an engineer, I do not expect it. In, yeah. in 2004, it was something which was very, very new. Yeah. So we were looking at, uh, then he gave me an example of green, what it is. I immediately take that. This is the differentiator I am looking at. Nice. And we adopted, we went in for gold and it was a great marketing tool. Mm. It's quite possible out of 10 tenants who took the space, eight may not have understood what it is. Yeah. It was only one person who understood yeah. and he came from Europe, so it was ABN Amro person. When we started giving him, he said, boss, I know all this particular thing. If you are doing it, it's very good. I only hope this thing works. Yeah. And today I can proudly say that this particular building is one of the lowest consumer of energy. Almost 60% of the energy comes from our own wind farms. Almost. Uh, 100% uh, of the water is not getting recycled because I am not able to use but I would say that at least 70% of the water is getting recycled hmm. and maybe in next couple of years uh, we would become zero discharge in terms of water. Wow. Okay. So uh, we have set new benchmarks as far as um, the green standards are concerned. And green and environment is such an important thing for the future generation. It, 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 it looks like you want to create a legacy in creating sustainable green buildings and to, to be known for that. Mr. Chordia, we would like to wish you all the very best on that journey and, and we hope that you can climb way more heights in, in this campaign because clearly the world needs more people to build greener buildings uh, and, and, and give a better future for our next generation. Thank you very much for this opportunity and Thank wishing you. you all the best. Thank you very much. Thank you.